Hello to everyone in Shocker Nation, and we are obviously in the midst of an unprecedented experience. Nothing in any of our lifetimes has really paralleled this, and the effect of the coronavirus on college athletics is unlike anything other than maybe going back to World War II as far as how it affects student athlete eligibility, scheduling, and so forth. And so this video is to give athletic director Darren Boatwright an opportunity to talk a little bit about what's going on, hopefully answer the dozens of questions that are out there in many people's minds. So Darren, first of all, let's just talk about how is the athletic department handling this crisis and, and to your knowledge, what you've been able to determine, how are your student athletes handling it? Well, to the best of our abilities. I mean, I bet, think that's about the only answer that I can give. And uh, this is, as you said, uh, unprecedented times and uh, hopefully something that we'll never go through again. But uh, uh, this, is, this has been a time of uncertainty uh, and a time where you just try to communicate with your coaches and communicate with your staff and uh, do the best that you can to provide information. And when you can't provide it, you go find it and uh, try to get back and, uh, and discuss it. But uh, it's very different times. I, I was just thinking uh, when you walked in, Mike, it's probably the first time you and I have ever been in a room together and not shaking hands. Yeah. And so it's uh, just uh, part of our regular routine that we always do, pre-game, post-game. And uh, to, to, it was, that was just a different experience in itself. And you just kind of answered this, but I thought I'd just follow up with uh, what are you doing within the abilities that you have to support the student athletes? Well, making our services available as much as possible. Uh, you know, uh, it's uh, easy to forget that they are still in times where academic requirements are, uh, are on them. And so they're learning online and uh, going through their classes online and virtually. So we continue to make our student services uh, areas available to them by appointment only and uh, you know they are having video conferences with uh, those that can assist them during these times and uh, just trying to make sure that we're there for them. I know that we've had uh, coaches and strength conditioning coaches that have provided uh, workouts to them. It's not, that, not a situation where we can monitor them but we can provide them workouts uh, so that they can try to keep their their mind and body and in good shape as well during this time when they're distancing. To your knowledge, did virtually all the student athletes who are from outside of Wichita go home as soon as the, the measures were taken to end schooling as we know it and the schedules and so forth? We still have a handful here in, in Wichita, so uh, I think we have uh, uh, 25 or so that, are, that remain here, so uh, we're trying to make sure that we uh, have some uh, strong contact with them to make sure that their needs are being met. Uh, while we are uh, taking control of their, or not taking control, but uh, while we are looking after them during this, this time where they're here, but we can't spend time with them physically. So I uh, just want to make sure that we're providing everything we can for them and the services they need. Obviously, this is an important consideration. What kind of financial impact does this have on the athletic department? We don't know for sure yet, but it's going to be substantial. Uh, it's, it's a big hit. Uh, because not only uh, did we lose revenue coming in uh, from NCAA tournament uh, funding and uh, sponsorship dollars in some cases, but we also lost uh, season ticket revenue and some of our spring sports, uh, the opportunity to, uh, to create additional revenue through apparel sales, at events, as well as concessions. So uh, there's a tremendous hit that's coming to college athletics all across the country and it's something that's going to be felt at all levels. One thing that you had going on that certainly plays into that financial aspect was a couple of major construction projects going on here at the arena and at the new Student Athlete Center and what's the status of those? Those construction projects continue, uh, continue on pace and on schedule uh, as long as the uh, supply chains are not uh, diminished then we'll continue with those. Thankful to our supporters who have helped us uh, with pledges and donations that have already been made uh, and we know that there's an economic downturn out there that is going to affect us moving forward and potentially long term but we thank those that uh, have already stepped up and and made commitments and uh, and donations as well but uh, those those projects are ongoing and uh, that gives us something exciting and something positive to to look after during this time and we still have a couple of our facility staff here uh, each day to walk the facilities uh, when you have as many 
uh, buildings and fields and uh, things as we do. Uh, it doesn't take, doesn't take long for something to go awry, whether it's a, a small leak or uh, something formed or something's not working properly, then we need to know that as soon as possible. So our staff uh, continues to come in uh, periodically and check the facilities and, uh, and make sure that we're on pace there. Again, you, you kind of touched on these issues a little bit uh, previously, but uh, what are your expectations for your student athletes while they are social distancing? And, and what about upcoming summer school? What are the expectations there? You know, do the best you can and uh, do the best you can to protect yourself uh, and your fellow human being. I mean, follow the social distancing guide, guidelines as much as you possibly can. And uh, I think that if we're gonna see a downturn in this, in this uh, COVID-19 virus, uh, a lot of it is going to have to do with social distancing. So uh, we ask that they uh, continue to perform their academic work. Uh, I know by their dedication that they're going to continue to keep their body and mind in, in shape, um, but also do their part uh, in trying to eradicate this, uh, uh, this virus. So uh, from a summer school perspective, the university has made the decision to do the summer school online as well uh, for this summer. Uh, so we'll be continuing this process of academia uh, as we currently are uh, for the foreseeable future. You know, it occurred to me that uh, there are some things, if, you're, if a student athlete's in a proximity with another, they could play tennis together without getting too close. You could, a pitcher could throw to a catcher. So I guess there are a few things that can be, be done within the concept of social distancing. There are. I noticed today on social media that uh, a few of our uh, softball student athletes are having a little fun and made some videos of how to work out during these times and how to keep keep your arm in shape and so forth so they were uh, they were having a having a good time with that and even implementing their pets into the workout so uh, in some areas so they were they're doing what they can I think this is uh, about the, entering the third week of uh, of the uh, harsh social distancing uh, guidelines so uh, I think everyone's getting a little stir crazy so it was good to see them out having fun and uh, it brought a smile to my face and I know it did to theirs as well. You know, one of the things that came up right away when the spring seasons were canceled at a very early point was what about the possibility of senior student athletes being given another year to come back and play? And the NCAA has granted that. And I just wondered uh, one thing that people may not think about, what compliance issues does that bring up? Well, there's a lot of compliance issues as well as real life issues. We have 24 seniors uh, whose spring semester was disrupted uh, and the end of their career was disrupted. So they will have the opportunity to return. Uh, the NCAA is going to allow uh, uh, the scholarship restrictions and the roster restrictions to be, uh, to be lifted next year so to, to, to make amends for, for that missed season. And uh, we will see if it fits individually in, uh, in their professional life. You know, we have some that uh, already have committed to jobs, uh, full-time jobs and employment that starts July 1. And so, uh, you know, they have to make some decisions. And, and in some cases, they'll have to make a decision to forego their, their final semester of eligibility. And that's, that's harsh, uh, but they have real life to prepare for as well. That's what we're here for is to prepare prepare them for that and uh, you know now they have a decision that's unlike any other before them has had to make. You mentioned you know uh, dropping some of the limitations but for instance at a sport like baseball where you get 11.7 scholarships if you have some seniors come back how, how does that change or how is that altered or do you even know yet? Well the way I understand it Mike is uh, that 11.7 will be relaxed uh, just for the amount of scholarship uh, that those uh, you mentioned baseball, so those young men, um, whatever they were receiving this year, uh, they cannot exceed that amount, uh, but they can receive up to that amount uh, in addition to the 11.7 uh, for next year. Uh, further than that, I don't really understand it. I rely on our student services and compliance to uh, make sure to educate our coaches and staff on that to, uh, so that we are accurate when we talk to the underclassmen. Uh, and make sure that we all have a clear understanding uh, of what the pathway looking forward uh, you, looks like. 
you mentioned the, some of the decisions that their senior student athletes are going to have to make in regard to possibly coming back, and I'm sure some of that's still in the works, but do you have a sense yet of how many of the, the spring sports seniors might return? I don't, uh, not individually, uh, but we are, we are going to uh, ensure our part as, uh, as the athletic department and through our SESO organization uh, that we will honor and, and make available those scholarships to them. So it will literally be a decision that they make. So uh, that's, that's real important to us that we're not, we're not gonna cut uh, anyone based on the, the dollar amount of their scholarship that uh, I feel like that we owe them. You mentioned loss of season ticket revenue among the many financial impacts earlier. Uh, what are the options for, say, baseball and softball season ticket holders who lost part of their schedule this year? Our ticket office has been very diligent the last three weeks in reaching out to each individual ticket account uh, holder, and we've made three options available. Uh, one is they can donate uh, the amount that they had already purchased for the season ticket and donate that to the efforts of the athletic department in uh, trying to fill in this, this gap that we have. The second option is to move that uh, to next year's season ticket price uh, for the 21 spring season. Uh, and then the third option uh, is a, a full refund uh, for the amount that had not been utilized. So we had played a few uh, baseball games, so uh, that will be fractional fractionally discounted, but uh, softball had not played a home um, event at this time, so theirs will be 100% uh, refunded should the donor want that. And following up on that, what about say-so renewals? When will that go out? Are you anticipating having to increase prices or increase uh, ticket prices in any particular sport? You know, at this time, that's not something that's in the forefront of our mind in terms of timing of when to send that out. I don't think that that would be very socially responsible right now, uh, just with the uh, instability uh, of, of our markets and uh, just the instability of our everyday life right now. So we have pushed pause on the say-so renewals uh, going out as well as uh, men's and women's basketball season ticket renewals. Those will be held as well. Uh, but we are committed to not raising prices uh, for say-so or season ticket for, uh, for next year. So I think that's important for our fan base and uh, important donors to, to know about uh, right now is that at minimum it will be flat. Uh, so we will not be looking to, to raise prices in any way. So hopefully that will allow them to begin to think and make some decisions moving forward as their financial situation becomes more clear individually. And, and speaking of that, what kind of response have re you received even so far from sponsors and donors? Very supportive, uh, just reaching out. It's been interesting, the number of emails that uh, I've received personally, and I know people across the department have received, uh, or phone messages, text messages of people just saying, hey, we miss you, and we miss them, and uh, miss seeing them in the places that we normally do, and spending the time that we generally do this time of year with them. So uh, it's been very supportive, and. Uh, you know, there's, it's just, we're all going this alone, but we're doing it together. And, uh, and I think there's a country song about uh, being alone together, and that's, that's what we're witnessing and what we're experiencing right now. If, if at all possible, are you getting any kind of support or help from the American Conference and the NCAA at large in this situation? Uh, we we uh, participate in weekly calls at minimum uh, with the American Athletic Conference. Uh, they are doing a very good job of keep, keeping us informed um, of the goings on from the NCAA level uh, and on down and they are uh, gathering information for us whether that would be in the uh, explaining some of the loan options that have been made available um, by the federal government or even uh, exploring lines of credit that could off also be offered uh, to institutions. So. I've uh, been very pleased with the American and the way that Commissioner Oresco and his staff have communicated with us and I've uh, been very diligent in that. Any thought at all, any consideration about fall sports schedules or if they're going to happen in the fall, let's say? Not yet. Uh, I don't think that that's, uh, that's something we can know until uh, we get students back on all of our campuses. I think that's the most important step at that point. Uh, is when I think you start to identify what the fall hopefully uh, looks like and possibly even the spring if this uh, bleeds over into the fall, which it very well could. 
Uh, there's so many, uh, so much uncertainty right now, we don't know, but uh, although we're doing our homework and having conversations, we don't want to appear that uh, getting back on the field and uh, competing is our number one priority right now. Uh, our number one priority is ensuring the safety of this campus, uh, of our staff, uh, of our faculty, uh, and also our student athletes. And to that same end, really a, a more immediate attention, some special summer events were in place to come here, USA Women's Volleyball, uh, the TBT coming back for the second year. Uh, any determination at all on those events? Uh, well, the TBT is uh, considering uh, a couple of things. They're considering having a, uh, a tournament for television that would have no, no fans. Uh, and we would be interested uh, in being the sole site if we were given that opportunity uh, where all the teams would just come to Wichita and compete. Uh, the USA Volleyball, I believe, is just going to back up a year uh, and push back a year kind of to mirror the Olympics. Uh, that was a, a preparatory weekend uh, for the Olympics that was coming up in 20, so they'll just push uh, to 21. Uh, and then we also have uh, lost several important and uh, popular fundraisers that just uh, won't happen uh, this spring and summer. Uh, so that's another uh, impact that uh, this COVID-19 has had on us. Just to, to kind of wrap things up, uh, obviously this is such a, an unusual situation. Nobody's ever dealt with anything like it. And uh, so I'm sure it's just an ongoing learning process of how best to handle everything. But do you, do you feel pretty good about uh, where you are as far as doing as much as you can to this? Well, I feel good about the individuals that uh, we have in our department and on this campus. Uh, Dr. Golden has done a fantastic job along with Provost Muma uh, of leading the way for the for the university uh, and I feel great about the staff that we have here in athletics especially our senior staff uh, and the knowledge base that they have the experience that they have and uh, we just work throughout the day and wake up every morning and see what's new that's facing us uh, and then communicate and talk about it as much as we can uh, this is going to be a uh, this is going to be an interesting chapter in the book one day I can tell you that but uh, you know there's no blueprint for this so to go into it thinking that you have the answers is really dangerous. And uh, you know, I want to leave to the medical professionals and uh, those that look after our communities and state uh, and nation, uh, I want to leave, the, uh, leave the, the big decisions up to them and not pontificate on uh, something that we have very little knowledge of. Uh, a lot of times during times like this, uh, people jump out there and say things without any regard for uh, who's listening or the lack of knowledge that they have. And uh, we want to make sure that we're not in that camp. Darren, thank you. And for all of you who have watched this video, we hope you have found it somewhat gratifying, edifying. Uh, obviously, still a lot to be determined and a lot of things up in the air. So who knows, at some point, we may come back with one of these to update you on things that have transpired. But for now, stay safe, stay in, and thanks for watching.